thank you very, very much for being here. Appreciate your time. I hope that we can have a good time together and do a successful repot of my Mirmacophila tivicinus. Little background story to her. When I got her, clearly this would be a mounted orchid. Considering my circumstances here in Southern Spain, I can't mount this one. I would not be able to keep up with it and its needs because of my very, very low humidity. These big structures are only a baby format. She is still young. But what I did when I got her, because of her beautiful flat way of growing, I just plonked her on my LECA and self-watering setup on the pot, attached a stake to her because there was nothing, no roots, nothing at all. And I, would, I waited, literally just waited. I knew that I had very big structures to work with. I was prepared to take the setback on board in order to get her into my preferred method of growing. So for a year and a half, she honestly, no growth, no roots, objected to everything, and she was just very, very loose. Turns out last year she started to kick into action and started to understand I meant well. So this little back end here all started to grow last year, and all these itty bitty little growths have grown roots in the pot, she is now pot bound. The thing with this orchid, I thought I would have a few more years that I could leave her in this pot, seeing as the first year and a half, there was no root growth. I can extend my repotting time period from my preferred two to three years to four to five. No roots in the pot, there is no decay and no decline. There's nothing to clean up. But <clears throat> this new growth right here, <laughs> uh, yeah, poor thing. I thought it was going to be a lot smaller than it actually is. And it really got fetched against the side of the pot there. And yeah, that's not nice. I mean, it's nice it's contained in the pot, but you know, these long extended growths, I want to encourage that. So what we're gonna do is take her out, clean her up, and then she's going back into a semi-hydro setup, not with self-watering, just semi-hydro in a bowl. And hopefully then I don't have to worry about it for another three to four years. So let's get going. I am really, really curious to see what the roots are like in this pot. I have soaked her prior, got to make sure that I don't mess around with the steak here. So I've soaked her prior in the classic calcium, magnesium and seaweed, just to give her a little bit of an energy boost before I disturb her. And she's probably going to wonder what the hell I've just got myself as situated and what's going on here, but this new growth is also pushing new roots. So I'm going to do this now. I don't think the growth will flatten itself out anymore, but I can definitely clean her up and give her a good start in a nice bowl setup, which is going to be fun. And you can see there's not so much happy roots in here, but the ones that are in here give me hope that my bowl setup is going to work. And the new growth, starting new roots. That's why I'm doing this now. If the other growths were to fail. So I can scoot you back into this position and let's get all the dead out. I had her initially just on like, you know, different sized lecker. You can see their small and large LECA all intermingled in here. I also <laughs> put sphagnum moss to encourage root growth, but we can get rid of that. And I'm just going to now, as you do, go in and chop off roots and find, make sure that I don't, that I don't take any live roots out. We want to make sure we keep the live roots so that one's alive. Despite the fact that it looks brown, this one is very dead because it has that soft texture to it and you can just pull it apart. So that is the characteristics of these roots. Just because they're brown, it doesn't mean they're all dead. It'll also be much easier for me to cut a dead root that has lecker clinging onto it. And maybe I need to get my tweezers instead of using my chubby hands. I love this. I love the look of this. And this makes me excited for the bowl setup because I don't have to then worry for a while, she says. <laughs> I thought the same initially. 
got to be careful. This root looked dead and it's alive. Okay, I've got to be careful. Also a good position. <laughs> Just face the orchid upside down. Her growth habit is so flat, makes it much easier to handle. <laughs> So I'm not going to fuss much more about it. Everything is looking good in here. And I discovered a new growth and I've cracked a root here. So that's why I'm stopping to fuss around. Here is a new growth coming, which is amazing. And here are the new roots from the new part, which is also amazing. So this is a shame, but with the new growth there, it won't be just so bad. It's just collateral damage. So let's get the bowl, get her situated and pretend nothing ever happened. Beautiful bowl, gonna work perfectly. Big holes, she's a super highlight orchid so I can actually put her on my patio table and just leave her there and flush and fertilize. Gonna be so easy to take care of. I still have some broken leca, big pieces that I sorted out from the other broken leca and I'm going to use that as crocking. This orchid is vigorous and robust. She can take that. I wouldn't use this for any other kind of cattleyas or anything else, but because it's crocking and she is a strong orchid, she can handle this. So I'm taking advantage of these bits and pieces and not wasting too much of the clean good leca. Now this has also been soaked and sterilized the way I sterilize and soak my leca completely so leached and everything even though it's nasty but I knew I was going to try and reuse this at some point here we are next thing the orchid let's just make sure that we don't get her in too deep or too shallow I actually like this height here yeah this works for me I already like the level Here's that new growth that got kinked against the edge of the pot. I'm keeping her somewhat in the middle because as these grow out, we're coming to this side, the new growth here. So even though this is the back of the orchid, there's no point in me pushing her towards the back. Otherwise, I'm already compromising space on this lead. So sort of into the middle. So now all I'm doing is just nudging the leca into position so that the roots that were already quite used to having a wet climate around them will continue to have a wet climate around them. I did not use the submerged with water potting up method today, simply because I need my RO water for the hot wind that is coming. So I'm very, very careful about the root tips and how I'm nudging my leca into place. One thing I'm not convinced about is the fact that I've got basically the front of the orchid is this, clearly, because, you know, growing this way as well. And I have my holes here. Normally I have my holes towards the back because that is where I place my labels. But there's only one way to find out and that is to leave it because normally this might be the front of the orchid, but because of the light training that I do, this is always facing me. So the light is over here and that doesn't expose the holes in my face when this orchid is up on the shelf. So aesthetically it looks pleasing. I'm uh, not quite convinced, but I'm going to leave it like this and let her get on with it because more important right now is for her to get those roots to settle in before the hot winds take them out. And let's get her out and let me show you that from now on, all I need to do, have her on a table and flush away at liberty, filling up that reservoir. This is now just plain RO water she has had, which she's going to have until the next time. So this is just getting that flushed in and well, Lekka doesn't necessarily settle, but it's a nice feeling to fill up the reservoir with clean, fresh water. And basically, she will live on my patio table in the light that she likes. And then all I have to do is pour water on her. Perfect. This went so well. I'm going to move on and put my third Ancelia Africana into a pot as well. 
If you're gonna stay for that, fantastic. If not, I didn't expect this to go so quickly, but I'm, now I'm making an orchid potpourri out of it. So today we're gonna do the submerged potting up method. For this one, it makes sense. There's always one floater, hey? This is damaged lecker. So we'll put this one on top if it's so persistent. Right, new growth, new roots, in you go. Let's get you tied up at your final height. Get some support in. We're not going to make this too much of a rocket science thing. And if you're still here, despite seeing repeats. Thank you so much. I appreciate your company a lot. Didn't even need the secateurs in the end. I wanted those roots for anchoring purposes. Right, let's flush you through. This is now just plain RO water. The hard work is done. We've got roots growing. Now I'm just making sure that the top of the leka stays mineral salt free. There'll be a lot of flushing in the coming weeks and months until she is pot bound. And this is now where she will live on the lower shelf of my filming stand. The sun only reaches this area now late afternoon. So that's great, but no direct sun during the day at all. Lots and lots of breeze and fresh air as you can see. So a little bit of sun late afternoon, which isn't harsh at all. The other ones are doing okay. I have not lost the roots there. There is no light training at this point in time. That will come when the growths get a little bit bigger. For now, I need the growths to be in where the breeze is easy to catch because all of the flushing I'm doing, I don't want any growths to die or rot out. And here is where the Tebicinus will live on the table next to the Maxillaria tenifolia next to my desert log there and the other Ancelia africana because as we are expecting strong winds I've taken her off the top shelf I don't want anything falling over and they'll be okay here if the wind happens to get too strong I don't want this clearly blowing out of its pot I will put it down and protect it together with the Ancelia africanas but yeah this is the plan for the two that have now been potted up the Afri orchids order is slowly but surely settling into their pots which is wonderful i still have a couple of months to go for everybody to establish themselves i love it when these things work out like this so thank you ever ever so much for watching hope it wasn't too tedious i appreciate your time have yourselves a wonderful day and please stay safe and take care bye